Hey everyone, welcome to this chapter nine test review where we're talking about absolute value functions, quadratic functions, vertex form. Um, we're looking at the roots of a quadratic function. We're talking about how to complete the square, how to use the quadratic formula and what the discriminant means. Are you ready? Let's take a look. Number one, number one says which absolute value function has a vertex of one three. So what we need to remember is that the absolute value function form is f of x equals a, times x minus h, close the absolute value bars, plus k. And hk is the vertex. So if I plug in a 1 and a 3, I don't know what a is yet, so I'm just going to leave a there. But I do know that if I plug in a 1, 3, it would look like x minus 1, close the absolute value bars, and then plus 3. So the function that looks like that in that form happens to be my second one here. And again, I don't know what the A value is, but I know that that one is the only one that has that vertex of 1, 3. Number two, which absolute value function has a maximum vertex? So the only way you can have a vertex be a maximum is if the graph is facing downwards. That means that this vertex here, that top point, is a maximum point. Whereas if the graph was facing upwards, the vertex would be a minimum point. The only way for a graph to have a maximum vertex is if the a value is negative. So when I look at these four functions, the only one that has a negative a value is my first one. And so I know that graph is upside down and the vertex is definitely a maximum. Number three, which function is shown in the graph? Okay, so the best way to look at a problem like this is to say to myself, okay, I see the vertex and the vertex here is at three, two. So I know also in my shape is a positive one because the A value is positive one because I see it's going out one, up one, out one, up one, out one, up one, right? So it would be absolute value of X minus three and then plus two at the end. That's how easy it is to plug in the vertex and I have my answer. Awesome. Find the equation of the axis of symmetry for the function. It should say just find the axis of symmetry. So the axis of symmetry formula is x equals negative b over 2a. And when I look at this function, f of x equals x squared minus 8x plus 5, I can clearly see that my a is 1, my b is negative 8. I don't even need the c value for the formula. So now when I grab this formula, I plug in x equals negative, my b is negative 8, over 2 times 1. Well, that really becomes positive 8 over 2, which is just 4. That's my axis of symmetry, x equals 4. So now the next question asks, find the coordinates of the vertex of the function, and it's the same function. Well, before I can find the vertex, the ordered pair, I have to first find the axis of symmetry. So we already have that part done. So now if I want to plug in a 4 into this function, so f of 4, equals 4 squared minus 8 times 4 plus 5. I end up getting 16 minus 32 plus 5, which equals negative 16 plus 5, which simply gives me negative 11. So my vertex, when I plug in a positive 4, I get negative 11. That's it. That's how easy it is to find the vertex. Number six, is the vertex of this function a minimum or maximum? So just like the other problem about this, when I look at that function, I could see that the A value is positive, which means my parabola is definitely facing upwards. And if it's facing upwards, it means that that vertex is the minimum value. It's the lowest value on the graph. From the parent function of a quadratic function in vertex form to the function listed below, what transformation has occurred? Okay, so when I look at f of x, equals x minus 3 squared plus 1. Well, vertex form of a quadratic um, looks very similar to the absolute value. It's a and then in parentheses x minus h squared plus k. So I can clearly see when I line all that up that my hk is 3, 1. 3, 1, well, when the h value is positive, that means 3 to the right. And then your k value controls the vertical shift. And if it's positive 1, it means up 1. If the 3 had been negative, it would have gone to the left 3. If it, the 1 was negative, it would have gone down 1. So I know that it's just right 3, up 1. This next one, I see this function. The function is f of x equals negative and then x plus 4 squared. 
So I know when I look at this, my HK, my HK, it's the opposite sign of this four. So it's negative four. And then my K is the number at the end and I don't see anything. So that's zero. So first off, negative four, zero. Negative four does mean that I'm going to go to the left four. Zero means it's not going to go up or down. The negative sign means it's going to get reflected vertically. It's going to be flipped upside down. And so those are the two options I want to pick. I want to pick that it gets reflected and it goes to the left four. Okay, our next one. What function is shown in the graph? All right, well, let me go through the options and see what this actually should look like. So first one, 2x squared minus 5. So 2 definitely makes a more narrow parabola. This does look more narrow. Um, but minus 5 means it would be shifted down 5 units, and that's just not the case. The next one, 3x squared minus 1. So 3 also makes it a narrow graph. And is it shifted down 1? It is. So that one actually looks really good. The third one can't be right because negative 2 would be flipped upside down. It would be a downward-facing parabola. And the last one, 1 half. 1 half makes a parabola more wide or compressed um, vertically, like swooshed down. And it is minus 1, so that part's good, but the 1 half is not good. So 3x squared minus 1 is the best choice. Number 10, what are the roots of the function? So the roots are the values of where the graph crosses the x-axis. Now, I see that there's definitely two roots here, so it's not going to be one of the answers about there's no roots. It's obviously not going to be the answer also where there's only one number. It's got to be one of these two. So then I have to ask myself, what are the values of where this crosses the x-axis? This one looks like it's in between 3 and 4. This one looks like it's in between 6 and 7. And the only answer choice that has values that are in between those integers would be this one, 3.6. That makes sense that that would be 3.6. And the other one is at 6.4. A common mistake is to pick something like 5, 2, because 5, 2 is actually the coordinates of the vertex. But when you're asked for the roots, the roots have nothing to do with the vertex. It's where it crosses the x-axis. Number 11, what should be the value of C so that the polynomial becomes a perfect square trinomial? Okay, so perfect square trinomials, when you are looking at them, they are numbers where, uh, they are trinomials rather that look like this. Because if I ask you what two numbers multiply to get 25 that add up to get 10, you would tell me 5 and 5. And so I would just factor that as x plus 5 squared. Okay, x squared plus 12x plus 36. If I ask you what two numbers multiply to get 36 that add up to get 12, you would tell me 6 and 6. And so that would just be x plus 6 squared. If it's x squared minus 12x, it's still plus 36 at the end because you're really taking half of 10. What's half of 10? 5. 5 squared is 25. Perfect square trinomial. Look at the 12. What's half of 12? 6. What's 6 squared? 36, it checks out. What's half of negative 12? Negative 6. And what's negative 6 squared? It's positive 36. Any C value that you end that put you put at the end to make it a perfect square trinomial is going to be positive, first of all. And really the way you find it is you look at the value of B, you cut it in half, you take that number, and then you square it. And when you square it, you get the value that's supposed to be C. Excellent. Okay, next one. When using the completing the square method to solve the equation, x squared minus 4x plus 9 equals 0, the first step is 2. So the method of completing the square is about purposely designing a perfect square trinomial so that you can factor it so easily. This is clearly not a perfect square trinomial. What numbers multiply to get 9 that add up to get negative 4? First off, nothing. Second of all, the only numbers that would multiply 9 that get 9 are the, that are the same number are 3 and 3, and you're not getting a negative 4 out of a 3. So you would say to yourself, okay, well, let me get rid of this 9, and the way I get rid of the 9 is to subtract 9 on both sides. And if I do that, I'm left with x squared minus 4x equals negative 9, and that now leaves me with space to complete the square and say, oh, well, half of negative 4 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. And if I add 4, I make a perfect square trinomial, and then I can just continue on. So I do need to make sure I subtract that 9 on both sides first. Okay, excellent. Let's actually do a completing the square problem for number 13. So we have x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals 9. Now, this is actually a very friendly problem because that trinomial is actually a perfect square trinomial already. What two numbers multiply to get 4 that add up to get 4? 2 and 2. So this would just get simply factored as x plus 2 squared equals 9. Now, we learned that to undo a square, 
we do the square root. So we have to do the square root of x plus 2 squared equals, and we also have to throw in the special plus or minus sign in front of the square root of 9. We have to acknowledge a positive square root and a negative square root. Now when we do this, we get to cross out the square root and squared symbol. We're left with x plus 2 equals plus or minus 3. To get that x by itself, I'm going to subtract 2 on both sides, but you can't really subtract 2 from that 3 because it's a positive 3 and a negative 3. So what we do here is we write it as x equals, we keep that negative 2 out front, and then we do plus or minus 3. We use the plus sign to get the first solution, the minus sign to get the second solution. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1. Negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. And those are my two solutions, 1 and negative 5. Excellent. Ooh, another completing the square problem. Let's take a look. So this one I have x squared minus 8x minus 3 equals 6. Okay, that's not a perfect square trinomial. So I need to make it. I need to purposely design it to be one. So first thing I'm going to do is add 3 because I want to get the x squared um, minus 8x by itself. Now I'm going to purposely design a perfect square trinomial. So I look at the negative 8. Half of negative 8 is negative 4. 4 squared is 16. So 16 gets added on both sides because now I've designed a perfect square trinomial. x squared minus 8x plus 16 equals 25. That trinomial can then be factored as x minus 4 squared because what two numbers multiply to get 16 and add up to get negative 8, negative 4, negative 4. I then take the square root on both sides acknowledging the plus or minus square root of 25 on the right. When I do this step, I, it's because I then get to simplify out my square root and squared operations. So I'm left with x minus 4 equals plus or minus 5. Oops. I need to get x by itself. So if I add 4, if I send negative 4 to the other side, it becomes positive 4 plus or minus 5. I use the plus sign to get my first solution, minus sign to get my second solution. So uh, 4 plus 5 is 9, and then 4 minus 5 is negative 1. And those are my answers, 9 and negative 1. Awesome. Last, completing the square. I have a lot of practice here because we need to make sure we know what we're doing. x squared plus 10x minus 5 equals 9. So I'm going to do the same first step. I'm going to isolate my x squared plus 10x. So in this case, I'd have to add 5 on both sides. So I get x squared plus 10x equals 14. I then need to purposely design a perfect square trinomial. So I look at the 10. Half of 10 is 5. 5 squared is 25. So I'm going to add 25 on both sides. So now I have x squared plus 10x plus 25 equals 39. I can then factor this trinomial as just x plus 5 squared equals 39. I then know to undo my squared, I'm going to take the square root on both sides, acknowledging the plus or minus the square root of 39. The square root and squared symbol simplify out. I'm left with x plus 5 equals plus or minus. We don't know the square root of 39, so I'm just going to leave it. And you can see in the answer choices, surprise, there's a square root of 39. Um, and so my final answer is x equals negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 39. So that's two answers. It's negative 5 plus the square root of 39, and then negative 5 minus the square root of 39. And the top answer choice matches perfectly. Number 16, quadratic formula. Okay, so your quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And I can see in this equation that my a is 2, my b is 15, my c is 7. So ready? I'm going to plug these in. x equals negative b, so negative 15, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so 15 squared minus 4a times c, all over 2a, so 2 times 2 song is so helpful. So it's negative 15 plus or minus the square root. I have to clean up what's underneath my square root symbol. So 15 squared is 225. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 times 7 is negative 56. 
all over 2 times 2, which is 4. So now this is x equals negative 15 plus or minus square root 225 minus 56. Hmm, so 225, I'm just going to do this on the side, minus 56. I can make that a 21. So it's 9, and then, and so it's 169 all over 4. So then I have x equals negative 15 plus or minus the square root of 169 is 13 all over 4. Okay, lots of good math. And so I use the plus sign to get my first solution, minus sign to get my second solution. Negative 15 plus 13 is negative 2. Negative 2 divided by 4 is negative 1 half. Negative 15 minus 13 is negative 28. Negative 28 divided by 4 is negative 7. And those are my answers. Awesome. Another quadratic formula problem. Okay, let's take a look. So I have x equal, I'm sorry, x squared minus 8, 8x equals negative 16. First thing I do need to do here is I do need to set it equal to 0. That way I have my proper a, b, and c. So x squared minus 8x plus 16 equals 0. I can see that my a is 1. My b is negative 8. My c is 16. So this would then become x equals negative b. So negative negative 8 plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 8 squared minus 4ac, all over 2a. Awesome. Negative negative 8 becomes positive 8, plus or minus the square root. Negative 8 squared is 64. Negative 4 times 1 times 16 is negative 64, all over 2. You see what's about to happen here? 64 minus 64 is 0, right? So I end up getting 8 plus or minus the square root of 0. What's the square root of 0? It's just 0. This is really 8 plus or minus 0 over 2. Now, what you're going to see here is kind of special. 8 plus 0 is 8. 8 divided by 2 is 4. What if I plug in, what if I use the minus sign now? What's 8 minus 0? It's still 8, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. There's actually only one solution here. Anytime the discriminant is 0, there's one solution. If the discriminant had been a nice positive number, I would have gotten two solutions. And if the discriminant is negative, you won't get any solutions because you can't take the square root of a negative. So my solution there is just 4. So now that leads us to the next question. State the value of the discriminant. So the discriminant is just b squared minus 4ac. It's just the expression that's underneath the radical symbol in the quadratic formula. So when I look at this function, because I see it's set equal to 0, um, I know that my a is 3 my b is 5, my c is negative 9. The discriminant tells you how many solutions there are to the equation before you even solve them. So if I plug those numbers in, I would have 5 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 9. 5 squared is 25. Now, negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. Negative 12 times negative 9 is positive 108. And when I add those up, I get 133. Because this is a positive number, I know if I was to plug that in my quadratic formula, I would get two solutions. If it's like the last problem, b squared minus 4ac was equal to 0, we only had one solution. Okay, so the value of the discriminant tells you how many solutions there actually are. So now, next question. Let's see if you were paying attention carefully. If the discriminant is 0, that means the number of solutions is 1. Because in the previous problem, number se two problems ago, number 17, the discriminant was 0. And there was only one solution to that equation. And the last one, determine the number of roots um, the quadrat quadratic equation has by calculating the discriminant. So 4x squared minus x equals negative 7. I'm going to go ahead and set that equal to 0 so that I can properly see my a, b, and c. So that means my a is 4. My b is negative 1. My C is 7. Okay, so B squared minus 4AC. So my B squared is negative 1 squared minus 4 times my A times my C. Negative 1 squared is 1. And then negative 4 times 4 times 7. Okay, so 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 7 Let's see, is 2, carry it, is 112. So it's minus 112. Well, 1 minus 112 is negative 111. 
if that was in the square root symbol and you go to put that in your calculator, you're not getting any real answers. So because the discriminant is negative, there are no roots, no solutions at all. I hope this video was helpful. Good luck on your test. Bye.